is a lot to say about the horrible attack in Collierville, Texas, this past week. Um, the heroism of the hostages involved, the and bravery and quick thinking, and the uh, the bravery, of course, of the first responders who are willing to put their lives on the line outside. Like it really, um, there's a lot. I have to say, part of what I'm thinking of is the anti-Semitic ideology that helped drive the hostage taker, the attacker, to that place. That unique ideology that Jews are uniquely privileged and powerful. And that's an idea that isn't just shared by this mentally unstable individual, but like across the board, the guy who attacked the synagogue in Pittsburgh a couple years ago um, for shared that ideology, didn't share a lot in common with this week, the past week as attacker, but he had that. And people all across society and all across the world, you find individuals who otherwise have opposing worldviews, from Louis Farrakhan to David Duke, um, to right-wing Christian leaders in Europe, to Muslim leaders in the Middle East. You can find individuals there who share this view that Jews are uniquely powerful and privileged, and as such, they make victims of the rest of us, of their group, and that fantasy absolves them of a degree of responsibility because there's this evil group that is uniquely powerful and privileged. They're victimizing the rest of us. And so we can, and so bad things that happen are their fault. And so we can strike back against them. That sort of hatred and bigotry. It's different from other bigotries, which are very much in evidence in the world today of the horrible scourge of anti-black bigotry and anti-gay bigotry and anti-Asian bigotry and a long laundry list of them. But the malleability of anti-Semitism makes it slightly different in that, not better or worse, just different, in that it, I think, makes the, the hater, the bigot, feel less responsible for their actions because I'm fighting against this big cabal that is victimizing me and my group. It gives me a certain freedom to act without responsibility for my actions because if I'm a victim, and what victim is really responsible for what they do? This is, look, if you look at the story that we're reading in the Torah these weeks, when the Israelites are slaves in Egypt, who would hold them responsible for what they do? They're victims of a greater power. It's this week, when we read in the Torah the Ten Commandments, that God says, no, there, you know, you sort of got a pass because you were being oppressed. Now, you're free, and the blessing of freedom is to be responsible. Here are rules that you can hold to that you're responsible for doing. This, by the way, is the promise of a hate-free society, that we enable each other to live lives of dignity through responsibility, rather than anti-Semitism, like other conspiracy theories, make people feel less responsible for their actions because there's some sort of big cabal out there that's harming us. We're supposed to feel us to be ourselves for being responsible for our actions. That's where human dignity lies. And that is part of what's behind the importance of the Ten Commandments. Is this idea of, though you were a victim, now take responsibility for your, for your life, and there's greater flourishing down that path. We have to fight hatred in all of its forms. We have to make sure that conspiratorial thinking doesn't spin out of control as it did in Texas this past week. And we have to stand with each other. No matter what our difference is, we have similarities that mean that we should help each other lead lives of responsibility and dignity so that horrors that we've seen recently happen no more. We can all gather together in peace. Shabbat shalom.